let's start with uh, this focus on Viterra there, food and grains in focus there, this Viterra takeover move. What do you make of these reports? If we have a look at what's driving this food area, it's all about food security and the growth of India and China, which is fueling not only the food area, but also the energy space. Glencore is already quite active in this space. If we have a look at uh, the, the percentage of trade it controls in that grain area, it's about 8.7% of global trade. So it's already a huge player in this area. It is looking to take over Viterra for about 5.2 billion Australian dollars. And if those reports are correct, that will provide a huge boost to those agricultural companies on the Australian market as well. Both of these companies, Glencore as well as Vitara, are quite active in Australia. Vitara through the AWB uh, purchase that it did in 2009. And also if we have a look at Gl uh, Glencore, they have a grain trading arm here in Australia as well. So if we have a look at some of the companies which may receive a boost, I guess the key one is uh, Grain Corp. GNC is the one to be watching today. If we have a look at some of the bear forecasts in this area, uh, the fact that we have had a better uh, better seasonal factors means that it's probably going to be a good financial year for stocks like Grain Corp. In fact, Grain Corp saying that it, it plans to export about 8 um, million tons this financial year or its financial year compared to 7 million tons in the previous year. So those are uh, agricultural companies very much in focus and should receive a boost on the news or reports around that uh, Glencore is looking to make a bid for Viterra. There has been speculation that there's a pullback coming. It, it hasn't happened. What are you watching and, and what do you think the likely direction for our market is? Is it going to be tied to what we see in the US? The offshore leads have been positive. We saw the US market having a positive session on Friday on the back of a set of solid a uh, lot of non-farm payroll numbers or the job numbers and of course we saw the Greece uh, deal 85% of bondholders agreeing so it does look like that collective agreement clause uh, are going to be uh, uh, used to get everybody else over the line. So we are seeing Greece now fading to the background. So altogether, the leads have been positive for the Australian market. Oil prices were higher, gold prices were higher, commodity prices generally higher. But I guess the thing that the market's going to struggle against are those numbers that came out of China over the weekend. We did see that trade deficit, the largest that we've seen in two years. A month on month, a decline of 23.6% in terms of exports. Now that number, of course, will be skewed because we did see the Lunar New Year holiday day in January but it does suggest that China is slowing down at a faster pace uh, than initially thought so that could be a, 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 bit, a bit of a hurdle for the Australian market so while we have seen some good offshore leads from commodity prices as well as from the US market it does look like those numbers are really going to slow down the potential growth in our market. Thank you for them. Well, we have seen the f first half loss accelerate compared to the previous corresponding quarter with a loss uh, previous corresponding period with a loss of $22.6 million. But of course it hasn't yet developed its resource in Congo and Cameroon and this is where the upside for the shares are going to come from. It is planning to uh, to start producing from Congo and Cameroon and it's aiming at 35 million tonnes per annum. But of course to do that it needs to develop this resource and that requires a lot of cash. So Sundance in the past has been looking for a company to partner up with but of course the key thing driving the, sh the shares at the moment is the Hanlong takeover bid at 57 cents. Now the last traded price for uh, Sundance resources though was only around the 40 cent mark which means the shares are still trading at a 40 percent discount to that takeover price of 57 cents and that's because this takeover offer is highly conditional. It's highly conditional on approvals from Congo as well as from Cameroon and of course the Foreign Investment Review Board has indicated that it will be reserving its decision until the uh, ASIC investigation into the previous Hanlong executives on insider trading is completed. But if we have a look at uh, Sundance's actual underlying business, it's a world-class resource with tenements in Congo and in Cameroon. And of course, the infrastructure is going to be an attractive point as well. There is little infrastructure in this region. So we could see third parties being interested in using this infrastructure. And last week, we saw that through the memorandum of understanding that we did see with coal mining wanting to access uh, Sundance's potential infrastructure in that region. Hanlong does have a 17.8% stake. We are expecting to see some conclusion in terms of this takeover bid in 2012, and that's the key driver of price. Um, and I guess that loss of $22.8 uh, $22 million, really insignificant because it hasn't yet really developed this resource or started producing it.